from 211 at the New Britain entrance to Central Park. Boards and commissions, and we have a few current openings on the Traffic Advisory Committee, the Agriculture Security Advisory Council, Friends of Kids Castle, Parks and Rec, Public Water and Sewer Advisory Board, Telecommunications Advisory Board. So if you're interested in serving on any of these boards and commissions, send your information or, uh, or your request to info at dawestownpa.org. And there, this, all these um, boards and commissions are also listed on the website. So you can even send in information from there and get more detail about those boards and commissions. Gift giving ideas. Now everybody got a pencil? So you're gonna have your, your um, gifts already lined up here. Stocking stuckers. Park and recreation gift certificates, park benches, mural prints, dogs around Doylestown posters. Um, you can buy a brick for Kids Castle. You can buy a brick at the service memorial. You can buy a brick at the dog park. Um, and then there's still Bicentennial Mercer tiles available. They're very beautiful. And, um, and I think that's about it for the gifts and, and announcements. Next item on the agenda is approval for the minutes of the October 20th, 2020 meeting. Has everyone had a chance to look at the regular minutes for that meeting? Are there any corrections or questions? Uh, yeah, I have one correction on the regular meetings minute on page three under the section about the, the co-stars payment. Uh, it, there's an extra space before an apostrophe in there. I'm trying to find exactly where it is in the document. Um, but you can, you can see it, page three, first paragraph. Uh, there, yeah, first paragraph. Um, well, like, approve the township's participation. There's an extra space between the, the apostrophe and the S, if we're being pedantic. Okay, well, that, that's, okay, that's not a change to the minutes, but you note the typographical spacing there. I don't know if it needs to be corrected, but thank you. Anything else? Okay, is there a motion to approve the minutes for October 20th regular meeting? So moved. Thank you. Listening for a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, then in consideration of the budget work session minutes for the same day, October 20th, oh, and October 27th. We have two sets of notes. Um, has everyone had a chance to review them? Yes. Questions, comments, concerns? Yeah, I, I have one comment. It's not a typo this time. Uh, on page three of the budget minutes for 1020, uh, there's a line conversation went on about how much one mill increase really is in dollar amount, saying only $40 per year. That should probably say only about $40 per on average. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? I have a slight change on that same page, the seventh paragraph. It says, uh, Ms. Herring asked if we increase contribution above the MMO over the next couple of years, does that balance the amount that we pay in the future? I think it was meant to say reduce the amount in the future. Yes, I think that's correct. I recall that conversation. So that change, are those two changes, anything else? Did you get them, Stephanie? Um, yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, with those two changes, is there a motion to approve the minutes from a uh, board meeting, a budget work session notes from October 20th? So moved. Second. second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, and now the October 27th minutes, board minutes, board note, never mind, budget, budget. notes. <laughs> <laughs> Have you looked at them? Yes. Everyone looked at them? Any questions, concerns, changes? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. Um, anything from the solicitor? Something we won't discuss later in the agenda, Madam Chair. Chief? Yes. In uh, June and July, I provided the board with some updates as to where the department stood with respect to police relations. Um, at that time, I suggested that the department could anticipate changes mandated by the state. Um, although those mandates haven't come down yet, I'd like to report that the police department has received updated training in uh, bias-based policing and implicit bias. Um, we have scheduled training tomorrow, and at the conclusion of that, the entire department will also have received uh, use of force de-escalation training. Um, administratively, all of our use of force policies have been reviewed and are in compliance with the Bucks County Police Chiefs Association's best practices guidelines and meet the Pennsylvania accreditation standards. Um, all the use of force policies have been reissued and signed for by our entire personnel. So I just wanted to bring this board up to date with where we were at with that. 
Excellent, fast work, congratulations, appreciate it. We're proud of this department. Thank you. I have nothing further. Township Engineer? Uh, a couple of minor things, just want to give you guys an update on the paving and curbing operations in the Pebble Ridge Woodridge neighborhood. Um, paving is as complete as of today for what they're going to do in this period here, uh, finishing up on Woodridge and Willow, Westaway, and Stony Lane Circle will be paved uh, the, f the first or second week in December. This allows the Water Department to finish their projects on Westaway and Willow and the curbing project to finish up on Westaway. So that's kind of where we are with that. Um, and then along with that same project, there have been some questions that came in about uh, sump pump and drain lines that used to, to go over the curbs into the street. We are working to come up with a response to that and how they can be rectified uh, to not have them discharge in the roadways. Okay. That's it. Well, thank you. Um, Dave Tomko, Director of Ops. I have nothing. Okay. Manager? Um, yes, so it is time that time of year to look at setting the calendar meeting schedule for the 2021 time frame. And in your packet, you have the proposed schedule. We do need to set a time for the reorganization meeting on January 4th, um, but we have our technically the first meetings in the month at five, and then those that coincide with our budget work sessions and also our regular meetings and the budget work sessions and when we're closed for holidays and then at this point in time, the um, PSATS convention as well. So that's all on the calendar there, looking for some guidance from the board at this time. I actually don't have it, but in, unless it changed from um, the last no, it's, yeah. rendition I got. I, I, I don't have the paper copy. Okay. Um, but I thought the only question was, for me, the only question was setting the time for the reorg meeting, and it's typically at 4 o'clock on that first Tuesday. Otherwise, I'm fine with the, the meeting schedule. Isn't it on the first Monday? Is it, but is that, did I, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, did yeah. I say yeah. first Monday? Yeah. I, I have Tuesday on my head. I would prefer to have it a little bit later just because of my work obligations. It would be nice for me to be able to complete my work day. If five it doesn't conflict. Yeah, five o'clock would be great. So with five? Five, it's fine. Yep, okay. Lock it in. Thank you. Yep, no problem. All right, so reorg Monday the 4th, is it? At five o'clock. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, and everyone else is okay with the proposed schedule? I, mean, I'm, I know I've raised this concern before um, about the 5 p.m. meetings. Just from my personal experience this year, having having been job hunting, and this isn't to complain about me personally. I, I know what I signed up for, that we would have five and seven meetings when I ran for supervisor. But having to look for a job with flexible hours to be out on time uh, does make it difficult um, and uh, you know, I will adapt personally, but for anyone who's looking uh, to fill an elected role potentially with us or just be here to talk about an addition they want to put on, on their house, uh, it can make it difficult with that 5 p.m. time. Uh, that's all, I, this, um, possibly moving it to 6 p.m. Uh, to split the difference, but just raising my concern about that. Yeah, every, every you know, you have your personal timing issues and every one of us has a different issue. If we, could, I, I prefer that we keep it as we have been doing it. I think it's worked well. Um, some of us start at seven in the morning and have a seven o'clock meeting at night. That's really taxing. So if we could be done by six o'clock. Right. And, 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 and I'm mentioning it's not for me personally to yeah. change the time to work around me. I don't have, I don't know any resident in the 20, almost 20 years I've been on this board that couldn't make a meeting because of the time of the meeting. Not once. So I've been making similar arguments. This would be the sixth time mm -hmm. because I, every time the schedule comes up, I come up with the same arguments that having meetings during work, typical work hours is, is, isn't good for our community to be able to participate fully. It puts, to get, it puts up a barrier that's unnecessary and I, I understand that it, a later night is uncomfortable. I've been up since seven o'clock, or actually I've been up since six o'clock myself. So longer nights are tough, but I think, uh, I think it really does a disservice to our residents and potential um, candidates for the supervisor mm -hmm. role to have not only an inconsistent schedule um, fl fluctuating between 
uh, five and seven o'clock, um, but also to have uh, have it during the workday half the time. For um, people. Everybody has, I mean, I mean, these folks here who are in this meeting tonight, they have a work day too. I understand. Um, and if you want to be consistent, I would have all meetings at five o'clock. But I think it, we, we balance it out by having a meeting at seven and one at five. I mean, a lot of people who are of a certain age, they don't want to go out at night. At I was going to say the seniors, they wanna, they people be, with small children want to come in and do say their say wanna, and then leave and put their kids to bed. Well, I think there's two sides to it. But but I'm worried about the staff as well, because I know Stephanie is late, late nights here. And then she's, and we have more night meetings in this, in, in, in generally speaking, than we do, um, I think, day meetings. I mean, for boards and commissions, we're here a lot at nighttime. Yes. So because I've been making this argument every time we talk about the schedule, and it's probably getting pretty repetitive, I've done a, a, a little visual because it was getting boring. These are all 54 of the municipalities in Bucks County. All the black or brown or black or blue lettering are municipalities that have meetings only after the traditional work day. The only one that doesn't is in red, Doylestown Township. The good thing about this chart is that it doesn't have a, a header. So it also doubles as all the letter, all the um, municipalities in black have um, consistent times, so they're all exactly the same time every month. The only one in red that doesn't have consistent time is, is Doylestown Township. So it works for 53 other municipalities, and I still don't understand the argument why we can't make that work. Because we've always been on the cutting edge, exactly. and it's worked for us. <laughs> I, Everybody wants to be Doylestown Township. I don't know why they have this, those hours. And the, the argument that nobody's actually said that to you, that, the, that they haven't been able to come to a meeting, I personally know my husband wanted to come to a meeting and couldn't. So I at least know somebody in my own household that couldn't come to one of the meetings because it was uh, during work hours. What's I was going to say, out of our meetings, though, only half of them are at 5 and the other half are at 7. Correct. So I think, if anything, we're meeting more people's needs by offering them at two different times because you have, like I said, families, people with young families who might want to come and then be able to get, be home to put their kids to bed. And then you have people who maybe are doing the opposite, doing dinner and then running over at 7. So. See, to me, I, think, I looked at it as we're serving more needs by being flexible, and I don't know out of those, those particular um, townships, we have 20 committees. I know for me, I can have Tuesdays where I can be on a tab meeting till like 9 o'clock at night. Right. So you've mm -hmm. been on that committee too. So I have like Tuesdays where I have like bike and hike at 8 o'clock in the morning, and then I can have a tab, and I can have... So I just think we have to be mindful. I don't know if other townships have 20 committees, and in the time of COVID, Stephanie in particular has to set up every single Zoom call. Right. So I think we need to be mindful of our staff because they're here, um, you're recording this for us. Well, I'm flexible, but I just think, yeah, I, don't, I just don't understand why it's such a big issue. Well, out of all of the six times I've done this, I've heard the arguments that older people can't participate because it gets darker and mm -hmm. they're afraid of driving. But the beauty of it is it's televised. We now have people calling in or emailing questions ahead of time. We've adapted because of COVID, which will help us adapt to the needs of people who might not be able to physically make it, whether they're elderly. Older people don't tend to, I'm sorry, to stereotype go online as much as they're more of a show up and go. I have a mother of, of a senior age, I will say. Um, My humble opinion. So we, we do have that accessibility for them to either watch on TV and call in or online or they can email questions. So we do have that. But we could have this meeting any time of the day then is what you're saying. It's, it's so accessible. Because if you're working, you, don't, you can't access it during the day. But the other argument of us having two different times so it makes people feel better, when, you're, when your home renovation is going to be in, in front of the board, it's going to be at a time. It's, it's not, you're not going to be able to show up at, at 7 o'clock because it's convenient or 5 o'clock because it's convenient. But you have a dentist appointment or a doctor's appointment, you make arrangements to be there. I mean, it's the same thing. I mean, if you I don't want to try and show up for something, I mean, I'm just, I just play devil's advocate. I'm just, you know. I don't see the reason to make that potential conflict instead of just make a consistent time, 6 o'clock, every meeting, so there's no conflict. Yeah. Well, we don't have to decide this tonight. Yeah. This is for reorganization, okay. so. We'll be able to talk about it again. I'll bring I, it up. I do want to just raise one additional concern. If we do keep it at five and seven, 
um, alternating. There are a couple blocks in here where we do not have, it, it does not alternate month. July and August, for example, would be two 7 p.m.s in a row. September and October are all 5 p.m. So if we're talking about making sure we can have accessibility for people to come in, maybe we need to look and make sure those alternate more frequently instead of having those kind of dead chunks where there's no 5 o'clock or no 7 o'clock meeting for two months. And I think I've seen a pattern over the years when we have that early 5 o'clock meeting, it, just for, I'll throw it out there, is possible consideration of just having one meeting a month um, unless there were something really going on because that, that first meeting of the month that's usually at five typically is, is very, very short meeting. Mm -hmm. And most of our business, land development plans, bills list, treasurer's report, things like that are always on the third Tuesday of the month. Kind of like in the summertime. Summer, that third Tuesday in the summer was maybe half an hour longer than our, a typical third Tuesday meeting. I mean, it may just be something that you want to consider. All right, let's think about that maybe. Um, Sounds like a good idea, and, and possibly maybe the other slot that we usually have the five o'clock meeting we can put in a, for the budget, a budget meeting, so we don't have a budget and then a board meeting. We can have it just solely dedicated to budget. We can do that when we have the budget meeting. When we have the, yeah, please, not all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll look to maybe one meeting um, a, a month over the year, have them all seven, except for budget. Work. You wouldn't have to hear my. Does oh, that make you happier? Yes. Does that <laughs> make you happier? Yes. <laughs> yes. I don't want to have to say this again. <laughs> this is actually the notes that I brought to my first meeting ever as supervisor on the topic. So. Well, I'm, I'm glad you have them all archived. I do. I keep yeah, everything. There you go. All right. Well, we'll look at that also for uh, the, meet, the reorg meeting. Thank you. And then I just have one other quick item. I invited um, Keith Haas. The Director, Executive Director for DTMA. Um, the water project is moving forward with in the Pebble Ridge Woodridge, and I thought the board might like just a real quick update as to the progress um, with the water system in that development. Very brief. Yes. Thank you, Stephanie. I'll be brief. So uh, our contractor started in late October, and we are now uh, complete. 100% uh, complete our Stony Lane Circle, so those residents are able to connect, and they've been uh, contacted. Uh, we finished Willow Lane, uh, I believe it was yesterday, so uh, we will be testing the water main, and residents will be able to connect on Willow, and we are about 75% done on West Away Lane, so another 20 residents will soon be able to connect uh, there. We will be moving to Old New Road, later this month, as well as going down Buck Road and uh, I believe David's. So construction is going nice. There's been some minor hiccups, but uh, all, all in all, uh, uh, everything's going pretty smoothly just as we anticipated. So that's it. Any questions? Do you have an update on the progress on the web page for the uh, project? Yeah, we're updating it, uh, I think, almost weekly. Okay. Yep. Great. Thanks, Keith. And they right. do so much more. You would not believe the meetings. You would not believe the workload that these, these, uh, the DTMA takes on. Thank you very much for coming and giving us the update. Okay, um, who's next? Supervisors. Um, Nancy. Sure. Um, at my meetings, um, the TAB meeting, um, there is going to be an opening, as you mentioned, um, starting in January. Um, the group um, is having robust conversations about programming and um, also really how to help the other committees, the other 19 committees that we have. Um, all of them, some of them are interested in some kind of social media or um, communication um, and trying to figure out how to not put a burden on our current staff, but get information out about their activities, um, connect with the community. I know that was one of Ken Snyder's goals and I'm trying to follow through on that for Ken. Um, so with that, with that thought, if anyone has a, has a knack for social media, I think that might be a little bit of a hole in our group um, if anyone's looking to apply for the TAB committee. Um, the other thing is I want to brag a little bit about the Bike and Hike Committee. Um, we had a meeting this morning, um, bright and early, um, and the Neshaminy Greenway um, Trail is being evaluated, and um, you can look for some very, uh, they're really trendsetters, they're setting up uh, a virtual community meeting. Um, you should see information coming up on that soon. 
it's really cool. Stephanie can probably talk a little bit more about it, but um, this group's been around since 1992, and Lynn Goldman and Tom Kelso and Steve Deskilio, is that how you pronounce it? Really, Steve really knocked it out of the park with the technology piece of it, but if everybody could um, just be a lookout for that, because I really think um, they're putting, they've continued to keep uh, Doylestown um, on the map and keep them as leaders when, in terms of bike and hike. Stephanie, you want to add anything to the... Yeah, we'll be sending notices to the um, residents, both in the township and the borough, will be participating. This is the feasibility study portion of the trail from the backside of Central Park to Pools Corner. Mm -hmm. There's an, there's alternate um, phase lanes of which it could go um, either sort of north or south side of, of the um, bypass. And... You know, it's, it's going to be the virtual room that you can go to instead of having a typical public meeting is, is like Nancy said, is really cool. Very cool. And you'll, you'll all have the link. It'll be on the website. I would encourage everyone to go once it's up and uh, participate and register for it. Listen to the, There's going to be a video portion. There's maps. And there's place for comment. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's, it's really cool. Okay. Thanks, Nancy. Jen, you have anything? Uh, the only thing I have to say is um, this past uh, week on the 14th was uh, the uh, celebration of Diwali, which is a Hindu, um, uh, Sikh, Jain, some Buddhists celebrate it, some Muslims celebrate it, but it's a festival of lights. And one of the things that is traditional for this celebration is, um, is fireworks. And I know we have exemptions in our firework ordinance for uh, firework-related holidays, such as the 4th of July or Chinese New Year. But I'd like to, at least in the future, when we're looking to amend um, our ordinances, to consider adding Diwali to that list. Yeah, has there been a request for that? There has not, but it seems fitting. Okay. And that's Asking. It. Thank you. Dan, do you have anything? Uh, yeah, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. The, the one thing I'd like to propose tonight uh, for our upcoming Board of Supervisors meeting is to resume the uh, the Zoom format we had earlier in the spring, uh, as the COVID outbreak appears to be worsening in our area. Um, that we make that available not just to the supervisors and staff, but also to our residents to attend as well uh, via Zoom, and go back to what we did in the spring and improve upon it with lessons learned. Now that unfortunately everyone's been become much more familiar with Zoom since then. I didn't know that we stopped doing it. Stephanie, do we stop doing that? Um, we're doing Zoom for most of our boards and committees. Um, we typically don't do it for the Board of Supervisors when we're, because we're televising live and we'll allow for the call-ins. <laughs> um, yeah, and so we haven't um, had the Zoom. It, it's still a little difficult with when we're in the room. We've saw, seen that like with budget work sessions and stuff. It, it's the computer's that we're using and stuff like tonight it's set for some a presentation from one of the people coming in so it's we need we need kind of advance notice when we're going to do something like that okay okay thanks dan all right moving on um correspondence and somebody back there wants to make a delivery of a package i think I don't yeah know. ken it's like a fedex <laughs> dave can you <laughs> thank you after the meeting's over <laughs> You're allowed in. <laughs> we don't have Zoom, but they send FedEx packages just during a meeting. Okay. PennDOT, notice of bridge repair, Slow State Road. Or Mr. Oh, Mr. Rebert. Yes. So we've received um, notice that the Lower State Road, there's a bridge on Lower State Road over the Mill Creek, the branch of the Mill Creek, which is probably about Old New Road to Bristol in that area. Um, that is going to be replaced, and that will take place in the spring. Also, PennDOT's going to be doing some pipe work on Lower State Road, um, probably starting sometime next week or over Thanksgiving. Dave, where's the Lower State Road one with the pipe work, e exact location? Uh, the the uh, pipe work for Lower State Road is um, uh, between uh, Old New and uh, probably uh, Brinker Drive. There's Brinker, two okay, across so it's a little up from where the... Yeah kind of in preparation for this replacement. So it's all in that same area. Thank you, Dave. So just notification. We'll be putting that information on the website as well. 
Okay, we've had we've had the PennDOT and bridge replacements before. This happening in Lower State Road is that that's going to require detours. Yes. Yes, and they're going to okay. be detouring all on state roads. All right, and have they given us a time frame? Springtime. Have they given us a duration of the time frame? I. Don't no, typically that's it, set by the contractor. contractor. They set their schedule, so I think once yeah. we'll, we'll be in contact with PennDOT, and once that's set, we'll we'll make that yeah. known. Um, I don't know. That's probably a good, at least one good construction season. So a couple, you know, a couple months. But, yeah. But it's right. a box culvert, so it's not that big. Because we li we like to hold PennDOT to their construction schedule. Yeah. So once we find that out, we can publish that as o well. Only because our residents, you know, need that for yeah. right. their traveling and purposes and so on. Okay. Thank you. All right, any unfinished business? Hearing none, seeing none. Okay, new business, uh, Tabor Western Land Development. There's a request to modify the land development or landscape plan. Your presentation is done. I have, I have what you need to do if you're so inclined. Hi, I'm Cindy Culp. I'm uh, from Gilmore and Associates. I'm here. You're gonna have to remove your mask. Oh. We're not gonna be able to hear you, I'm sorry. Cindy Culp from Gilmore and Associates here on behalf of um, Michael Meyer and or Chris Green. They couldn't be here this evening. This is the, um, this is, um, on, I was, I was um, under the understanding that the current most recently proposed plan was going to be available for you to view, but um, I, apparently it's not. I did bring a hard copy of it, um, but this is a sketch of the area um, that is, almost identical to the actual CAD drawing. Um, this is um, a, f a more usable space per the developer's request to incorporate a more formal garden area um, versus just the reforestation similar to what you see above that colored area. Um, so it's level, it's pitched at about 2%, which is a comfortable walking grade. It doesn't interfere with the drainage, the original drainage that is to the rain garden that is to the left um, of that formal area. Um, the quantities of plant replacement have not been changed. We are still installing the required quantity of trees. What we simply did was switch out species to provide a more... Um, a more formal garden palette. So we switched out our flowering trees. Um, we switched out some um, evergreen trees and some some beautiful architectural style trees to really give this space um, more of a formal botanical garden kind of feel to it. Um, there's at the far right of that rectangle, you see a green a symbol. There's going to be a nice big um, evergreen tree or semi-evergreen tree there so that you will see that as you are walking. Formal gardens usually follow rectilinear um, layouts and so sight lines uh, into the garden were considered in this design. Um, the flowering trees bordering it um, just to give it a real very lovely formal uh, usable space so that the interior of the space is left open. Um, those paths that you see are mulched paths. They're not paved. We are not dealing or changing any of the impervious cover on the site. It is still going to be mulch trails, which was what was proposed before. Um, but what was proposed before was just more curvilinear in nature. Um, this is a more formal arrangement. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? Do you have any questions that I haven't already covered? I don't. Ms. Jeffrey, do you want to take uh, that? I, I think I can take the lead. Um, the Board of Supervisors previously approved the land development plan for Arbor Square, and the developer is currently under construction. Before you tonight is the request on the part of Westrom to modify the landscaping plan, as you've heard. Your planning commission at their meeting on October 26, 2020, recommended approval of the modified plan that you've seen tonight. The plans are titled Amended Final Amended preliminary final plan, title, landscape plan, dated last revised October 15, 2020, prepared by Gilmore Associates. You are inclined to approve the request. You subject to the following conditions. One, compliance with a letter received from Pannoni Associates dated October 26, 2020, and continued compliance with all other conditions of preliminary as final plan approval, except as modified by the revised landscape plan for the formal garden. That will be it. Okay, 
Any questions? Um, my, my only concern uh, when I read the Pannoni uh, document, and I, I do love the idea and, uh, and all that, but some of the tree suggestions is non-native uh, to the region. That's something the EAC is really working hard to uh, focus on, at the, very, at the very least eliminating invasive trees, but focusing on native plants. I just wanted to check, has it, been, has it gone against the resolution we updated uh, earlier this year with our recommended tree planting guides from the EAC? Um, Sean Tor Torpe is here from Pannoni, um, and he's the conflict engineer who's been um, addressing this. Uh, so do you want to take that? Uh, yes. Um, some of the plant species are not native. However, what has been recommended um, typically does very, very well in our environment. Um, and we see no issue um, with the suggested um, plants that have been proposed. The only thing that we uh, do see as a potential problem um, was that we're recommending that they go with the male ginkgo plant as opposed to any of the female, just because of the, the odors, they can get pretty, pretty strong with the with Right, the, the cultivar that is specified on the plan is a male cultivar, it's called Princeton Century. It's, it's an all male cultivar for that very reason. And then the, uh, the only other issues that we had, I think it was just addressed, was we just wanted clarifications that there was no uh, further uh, proposed impervious surface. Um, and then also, we just want to see a grading plan of the proposed changes. Um, it was what, what we ha were provided, it was really difficult to see how those transitions, because as it was stated, the original curvilinear structure, there was averages of 10% throughout. And in order to create this space, um, they're looking to get it to 2%. So we just want to see yes. and make sure that that ties in correctly. That's all in your letter, is it not? Yes, it is. Yes. OK, great. Did I answer your question? Um, kind of. I, I mean, I knew that from uh, your letter. I just wanted to double. Is, when you're saying those are fine, is that uh, based on Pannoni's recommendation or with the township's guidelines on trees? Uh, it is with the township's guidelines okay. for, for your trees. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, any other questions and considerations? Is there a motion to approve the plan mod, uh, landscape plan modification as it's been presented tonight with the, uh, amend, with the consideration of the Pannoni letter? So moved. A second. Okay, calling the question, all in favor? Aye. 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 And one abstention? Thank you. Thank you. You're good to go. Before Thank we, you. Before we go on, can I report to Dan that all of us over here have a trouble hearing, not hearing you, but oh. understanding you. you Put sure. your mask off no, when you, you talk. Leave it on I will, I can do that. <laughs> and your, yeah. It's your male voice. <laughs> it, it's the timber <laughs> echoing off everything, I get it. You, you do have a very low voice, so it kind of <laughs> reverberates more than normal people's voices. You're not normal voice. <laughs> it's a very nice voice. I can speak there. higher. A little horse. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The board has had a, a, a in, in, you know, a very, you know, in-house uh, joke going, running on tonight. So we apologize that you're not all in on it. <laughs> Too bad. Okay, budget presentation. We all received um, the 2021 budget. We participated in. The, the more than several um, budget work sessions. Um, you've received the budget proposal on I Got Mine and Paper, um, and now it's time for our residents to consider over the next 20 days after it's um, been fully uh, available to them, um, as they call it, hanging, hanging the budget. So um, is there, I guess, a motion to, motion to authorize, to authorize the, the advertising of the budget? Um, I'd like, before we do that, I was, the only thing I um, would like to see is, I know there was an additional uh, park and rec person that was gonna be added. Um, and I know, I had talked to Stephanie and also, um, that I know we're in the process of reviewing sort of the larger view of our HR, that maybe we wait. I don't know if it's, if there, I don't know what the need is to hire someone with the park and rec right now, because I think that's a new position versus the other three positions are filling. Right, park, and, park and maintenance, not park and rec. Yeah, it's I'm sorry, not park, park and rec. It's in, I'm sorry, maintenance. Part of public works. I'm sorry, um, excuse me. And uh, just so the board knows, we typically have had 12, 12 in the um, public works 
uh, we're currently now down two um, current positions in public works, which we intend to replace. And then we had in the budget intended to add another parks and or public works designated for park and rec. Yeah. Um, Nancy, we have that actually built in to come in at the end of the first quarter because it does take time to go through the um, hiring process, advertising, hiring, background checks, et cetera, that before someone would be on board. So they would probably come on board end of March, beginning of April timeframe. So that's built into the budget already Great. from a dollar and cent standpoint. Um, Madam Chairman, I do have um, a very brief you no, go would for indulge it. so that no you'd need to do your thing okay. please <laughs> thank you thank you um, so Ed next slide please please go yes um, I don't know why you can bother with that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we can't see it anyway Pat yeah next slide. this is our schedule that we went through this year um, originally we began back in April um, with intended uh, reviews of the budget process. Unfortunately, due to COVID, we were not able to do that. Um, and so we began in June, concluding at the end of October and now presenting tonight. Next slide. And this is our 2020 forecast, seeing the um, operating revenues at over 12 million, operating expenses at over 11 million, net operating at 1.2. Capital revenue at 100, um, 108,000, and our capital spending at um, 2 million and three. So, um, I'm sorry, our grants and revenues, and then our capital spending at 2.3 million. This is the detailed, um, which we've all been looking at. These are all of our funds, all of our totals, um, including the uh, transfers from. Uh, various funds to other funds that we do throughout the year. Next is the 2021 preliminary budget with again operating revenues at 12.9 million, operating expenses at 12.4, net operating income of 470,000, capital grants and revenues at 2.6, and our capital spending at over 5 million. Again, these are the details of all of our funds from the general fund down to our roads and bridges, fire funds, capital debt service, et cetera. And then finally, um, what we're looking at in terms of the real estate tax plan for 2020, we were at 13.125 mills and we're proposing to be in 21 at 13.875 mills. Um, and you can see we have um, millage reallocation and debt service and the general fund and in the roads and bridges as well as new millage in our roads and bridges fund. And as the board knows from our discussions, um, when we were in budget work sessions, the revenues by sources, COVID was a very big impact this year. Um, we immediately began to look at those impacts um, and you see the nice pie chart that we've put together that gives you where the breakdown of all of our revenue comes from. Earned income tax, of course, being the largest. Um, and then the expenses. Um, you will see that expenses for next year um, are in capital. And one of the commitments the board is making for capital is in the road department and making roads as a big priority, um, improving them. We have had a number of phone calls. Of course, we're the focus on the Pebble Ridge, Woodridge, and the curbing and road pro program out there, but also not neglecting our other roads that are in need. And that has been a big focus as well as some other projects that will be coming on. And of course, um, it, personnel and fringes also pick up a portion. And lastly, the budget chart or the tax chart that we have um, and what one mill brings us and what the average residents assessed at and we anticipate um, 
what an average home would pay with that assessment at 13.875 mills for 2021. And finally, um, as what we are requesting from the board this evening is authorization to hang that budget as, as Mrs. Lyons indicated, um, and that will hang for 20 days. It is available not only here at the township, but the document will be up on the website tomorrow and residents will be able to view it at their leisure. And then of course the next final step will be the adoption of the 2021 um, budget at your December 15th meeting. And very quickly that was our recap. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Um, okay, is there a motion to approve the hanging of the budget? So moved. Second. Okay. Any questions, concerns? I just wanted to say that every year, it's amazing how much work everybody does. The staff, uh, ways and means, just incredible amounts of work. And there's so much to juggle. It's just unbelievable. So I wanted to thank all of you guys. Yes. Yeah, well said, Jen. Thank you. Colin McQuarrie. Thank question? you to the yeah. team. Thank you. Colin I want to say thank you for all of answering all my uh, questions, because I know I had a lot. So <laughs> thank you for all your time and all the charts. All right, let's get them all out now. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Ed, Ken, you know, yep. Ways and Means, PAC, mm -hmm. everybody. Department heads, Stephanie. All right, we good now? Calling the question. Yeah. All in favor? <laughs> Wait, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Good. We're hanging. We're hanging. Shoo. Okay. <laughs> Get those stirrups in order. <laughs> okay. Um, next item is the 2020 Pico Green Region Grant. Yes. Um, as board knows, we've received this grant a number of times. Unfortunately, we did not receive it in 19, and so they've they've put out an extra opportunity here this um, fall to apply again. This would be a kiosk project with some lands additional landscaping at the pool's corner. Um, it, it would become a bike hike trailhead similar to what we have at the Walt Berry Trailhead or over the kiosk that we have at Lower State Road in the parkway. Um, estimated cost would be $13,500. We're requesting $7,000 um, from Pico Green Region. And it would be $3,500 um, from the borough and the township, uh, and the borough has is willing to commit and you know make the application and see if they're willing to accept it. Uh, so at this time, I would, there's a resolution that is required, and that is attached for the board's consideration. So this is a joint application yeah. from the borough. We're we're being the lead agency on it, but we have their support to apply, and okay. and they would partner with us, which would be great. All right. Um, Okay, is there a motion to approve the resolution? I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I will sign on the behalf of the we Just all sign. Uh, one quick question. Uh, this big picture, this ties into the Neshaminy, uh, not the Neshaminy Greenway uh, discussion that's coming up, correct? Um, yes, that would okay. be where that 202 um, trail would come from the backside here, mm. would end there. There is a park and ride lot there now. Right. This would provide for that kiosk with place to put maps and brochures, a bench. Um, and the EAC had gotten that grant earlier this year, and we, in September, did a big planting there. And it already looks 100 times improved. It's beautiful with the trees. So it would, we want to make it an inviting place for um, people who are doing those kind of rides to, to park and, and ride and, and spend time in the borough and the township and come to our trails and everything. So yeah, it would, your question yes. was in the Chamonix Greenway. Is that what you guessed? Yeah, because we, we had mentioned earlier about um, the virtual meeting from, from Central Park to Pool's Corner. And this is what so Just making sure that, the, this yeah, is this is part of tying into it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, do we call the question? Yeah. Yep. Yes. We're all good. Mm -hmm. Just a point of clarification. Thank you. Okay, good. Um, next is the uh, Pebble, Ridge, <coughs> Pebble Ridge Woodward Sewer Project. They want payment. Number 18. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everyone saw this? Yeah. Uh, do you yep. care to speak to it? Um, yeah, I mean, the, uh, the subcommittee approved it, uh, reviewed it, so I, you know, I'll make the motion to go ahead and pay, for the, pay the bill. Thanks, Dan. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. All in favor of Dan's motion? 
Aye. 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 All right, um, la um, almost last. Treasurer's report from November 17, 2020. You received it virtually. Is there a motion to approve the treasurer's report? So moved. Thanks. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Bill's list of November 17, 2020. Is there a motion to approve it? I'll make the motion to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're next meeting on Tuesday, December 1st at 5 p.m. Thank you. Okay, we're going to be closed on Thursday and Friday, November 26th and 27th for Thanksgiving Day. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And Leaf and Yard Recycling is the um, third Saturday of every month, and the drop-off is um, at the New Britain entrance to Central Park. It goes on through March to December, and you drop off between 9 and 11. And the boards and commissions' current openings are the... Um, What's your thing? Uh, the Traffic Advisory Committee, the Agriculture Security Area Count Advisory Council, Freds of Kid Castle, Parks and Rec, Public Water and Sewer Advisory Board, Telecommunications Advisory Board. And if you're interested in any one of these boards and commissions, you can find more information on our, on our website about them and send a letter of interest to info.dostampier.org. And gift giving ideas, there's a whole list of stuff. Gift certificates to Park and Rec, park benches, murals, uh, mural prints, and the mural prints are what you see out in the lobby there. Um, dogs around Doylestown poster. You can buy bricks at Kids Castle, at the Service Memorial, or at Dog Park. And we have Mercer tiles remaining from the Township's Bicentennial in 2018. Phew, that's it. Happy Thanksgiving. Be safe. Yes, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Um, enjoy your time with family. And uh, we'll see you all Limited. soon. Limited family. Good night, everybody. So that's why you don't know what's going on. You used to be in on these things, Jeff, but now you can't have you back there. Enjoy your holiday. Yeah, oh yeah. Eight, I'm going to be here a little after eight. You want me here at eight sharp? You started at eight thirty. I thought I was going to be. You didn't tell me I have to be here at eight. I, no, you did it. I'll check. You're probably right.